Good day everyone and welcome to our first lecture on linear dynamical systems. In this lecture, we will establish a connection between dynamical systems and first order ordinary differential equations, particularly initial value problems. And um, we, we are also uh, interested in discussing systems of ordinary differential equations and their specific properties that enable them to represent a dynamical system. The properties in which um, they are um, understood as coupled systems, these properties also include the ones that make them autonomous and non-autonomous. We will be discussing solutions, um, with notations, and uh, the representation of uh, equilibrium points of um, autonomous systems. And then we will move on to plotting, um, and we will talk about plotting direction fields of dynamical systems in this lecture. There are some other kinds of plots that we'll be discussing in later lectures, but today we are going to talk about direction fields. And for all this computation and plotting, we will be depending extensively on Maple technology. If you are familiar with Maple technology, well and good. If not, you can have some free training with us when you um, come to the website and attempt um, the challenging problems that we have made for you to practice what you learn in lectures and you will solve dynamical systems and um, have some practice on them and there you will get some um, free training on maple technology as well so this is the first lecture and let's see how we go on that we start by revisiting the concept of first order ordinary differential equations here so by a first order ordinary differential equation we mean an expression a relationship between two variables x and y where y is a function of x y is depending on x x itself is independent and dy by dx which is the change in y that occurs when x changes so the expression in blue which is dy by dx equals uh, big f of x y is an ordinary differential equation uh, dy by dx itself um, says that y changes with x and the right hand side which is big f of x y it tells us how y changes with x so it is the description the exact description of the change and uh, dy by dx is such a such a powerful tool that it measures the change in the variable y even when a very small negligible change occurs in the variable x when x moves from its current position to a new position x plus h now uh, this means that even when the, the change in the position of x which is described by the letter h is very very small that it is very close to zero cannot even be measured with the naked eye our our tool uh, dy by dx does measure it an example can be the change of temperatures in two different countries uh, Australia and Pakistan so in a city of Australia which is Sydney the temperature on a Friday at 6 p.m. Um, has been 14 degrees centigrade while at the same time in Karachi a city of Pakistan where the time was uh, 1 p.m. the temperature was 34 degrees which is a big change and what is this change depending on it depending on uh, the geography the location where we are measuring the temperature so um, in this case our geography is the variable x and temperature is the variable y and the blue equation dy by dx equals big f of x y uh, describes the change that comes in the temperature when the geography changes and also tells us how it changes now we understand that the solution of the differential equation is the function that solves it for example, in equation 1, which is dy by dx equal to y, we need a value, a function y, that makes this equation an equation. So if we insert y equal to e to the x, we see that uh, if we insert it on both sides of equation 1, we will receive e to the x on both sides, and that solves it. Now let's have a look at the notation and format of ordinary derivatives. Uh, we'll be using any of the three types of uh, format that we are showing you here 
it could be either the prime format so it could be y prime x or it could be dy by dx or it could be a big dy where big d represents d by dx and so big d squared would be d squared by d squared by dx squared uh, operating on the function y and the function f that represents a differential equation will be um, a function of the independent variable x the dependent variable y and or any of the derivatives of y and uh, will be called an ordinary differential equation of uh, any nth order where n will be defined by the equation now um, it should be noticed that y and x both here are scalar functions uh, sorry vector functions not the scalar functions so they can um, be uh, a vector of um, any dimension but uh, in this course we'll be using them as only two dimensional vectors so x and y they both operate on r squared and will be two dimensional vectors initial value problems not only talk about the path of a trajectory but also talk about the initial values so for example if the equation dy by dx equal to fxy represents the path of a flight where x represents uh, the distance of uh, the aircraft from the ground and y represents its velocity then x naught will be the very uh, initial value of um, x when it was actually on the ground and y naught was the velocity correspondingly when it was on the ground so both x naught and y naught could be considered as zero now uh, what is the significance of having an initial value um, for a differential equation um, let's talk about it a bit later and first see um, how it works so for example let's say there is a solution of a differential equation in the form of y equals 2x cubed plus c. This is called a general solution. Why? Um, I will tell you about that. So when uh, there is an initial condition of y of 1 equal to 1 associated with it, which tells you that when x was 1, y also had the value 1, then you can find um, the value of c. And um, if you look at a little bit of work that I have done here, you will see that uh, C turns out to be minus 1. So uh, the actual solution, the particular solution, turns out to be Y equal to 2X cubed minus 1. And now I think uh, you have clearly identified the significance of uh, the initial value. Uh, it is to understand the value of the arbitrary constant because uh, this is something that looks ugly in the equation y equals 2x cubed plus 1 everything is known except for c and that c will be known if we know the initial condition and that's why we call uh, the above differential equation as an initial value problem now that we know about uh, first order ODEs and we have recalled the basic concepts of how their solutions work and what they actually represent we are going to talk about systems of ODEs and by a system of ODEs we mean two or more than two differential equations working together which means that there are two phenomena going on together and they depend on each other they are coupled with each other which is um, represented by the two or more than two differential equations um, that we are considering in this case uh, in this course we are only considering two the simplest case so that we can understand thing to the best and um, considering the system 2, uh, we see that uh, we have uh, one differential equation uh, as the dependent variable x and the second one as the dependent variable y. They are both depending on t. So although the right hand side um, does not show t anywhere, it only shows x and y, but since x and y are depending on t, we see we say that uh, the right hand side actually is a function of x, y, and t. A, B, C, D are just constants, just real numbers. And um, we want to express this system uh, in a form that is easier to solve. And that's why we turn it to a matrix form uh, in which the bold faced letter x represents the vector uh, x, y, where x, y are scalars, uh, the variables in uh, equation 2. 
and the matrix A represents all the coefficients of the right hand side uh, so that when you multiply A with the vector X you get the right hand side uh, expressions so uh, we have transformed equation 2 to equation 3 turning it into a metric system and that metric system represents a system of uh, differential equations uh, which is coupled represents two equations in uh, system 2 as coupled together in equation 3. In this slide you see a few examples of coupled systems. In the first example uh, you see a bird and some plants. You know that birds survive on plants and plants survive when, when birds fertilize them. So it is a coupled system of growth. In the second example, you see a wallet that represents money and you see some control over the wallet, which means that the economy grows when there's a control on expenditures. In the third example, you see a predator and a prey. Uh, big animals survive on small animals. And if uh, there are not enough big animals, then small animals, animals will grow indefinitely, which is a non-realistic model. A similar model is shown in the fourth picture in which a big a big insect is eating a small insect and the same um, criterion applies there that if there are not enough big birds um, the uh, small insects insects will grow indefinitely and if there are not enough small insects then the big insects will die of hunger so all these four examples represent coupled systems of growth Next, uh, we see that a linear dynamical system uh, is, as we said, represented by uh, an ordinary differential equation of the form dx by dt, where x is two-dimensional and is depending on t, and is represented by equation 4 here. Now, uh, the most popular example that is analyzed to understand a dynamical system is the pre data prey model. As you can see in the picture, uh, this model represents the growth of foxes and rabbits. Foxes are the predators and rabbits are the prey. As you can see, when the number of foxes is low, uh, the number of rabbits grow sharper. And when foxes start eating rabbits, the number of rabbits uh, come down and decays quite fast. And this cycle goes on um, with the time. So this is a perfect and very typical example, a predator prey model of a linear dynamical system and here we are going to talk about a beautiful concept in the theory of linear dynamical systems this concept answers a big question are there always exact solutions of differential systems and the answer is maybe not and then the next question is if this is the case is there a way we can analyze the qualitative behavior of a function in terms of its a differential system and the answer is yes that is quite possible and for that we analyze autonomous ODEs. Autonomous ODEs are uh, the same type of differential system that we have been carrying forward in all these slides of our lecture. So uh, they are of the form dxtt equals fdxt except that fdxt in this case is solely a function of x and this means that we are going to talk about time invariant systems. What is the significance of this type of differential system uh, for solution of a differential equation? For that we look at the geometric idea. We know that dx dt represents the slope of the graph at the point txt and if we know the slope then we can find uh, the speed of the trajectory as well as the direction of the tangent line at a certain instant. And if we collect all these tangent lines, we can definitely draw a whole direction field of the solution. And that tells us something really significant about the solution. Let's look at an example of autonomous differential equation. We are taking a very simple example of dx dt equals 2x, but we are considering three different initial values for this equation. So we consider that t starts at t equal to 12, and then we obtain different uh, solutions with respect to uh, the starting initial values of x, 10, 30, and 50. 
and first we solve it as a separable equation because we know we can separate x and t of equation 6 as shown in the solution. So we see how we obtain the solution x equal to 2 to the e, c e to the 2t. And now let's look at the solution in the graph. Now the small red arrows of the graph show the direction fields. And the three uh, clear graphs in green, uh, cyan and blue color, they show us the actual solution with respect to the three initial values. discussion on autonomous differential equations requires us essentially to talk about equilibrium points, the solutions where the system shows a horizontal slope. Now by mean of a horizontal slope, I hope you all know about it. I'm just recalling some concepts to take the discussion forward. As you can see in the picture, the horizontal slope lies at the maximum point of the curve. And when this happens, you know what uh, dx by dt should be. I'm sure you know it should be zero. And uh, when we talk about the equilibria of uh, autonomous dynamical systems, um, then we are uh, talking about uh, the critical point because we have already seen that it, um, in, in the example, that it was the point of maxima. So um, it is a critical point. And uh, since dx dt is zero, uh, x e has to be a constant solution of um, an autonomous dynamical system, and therefore we must have f of x e equal to zero because f of x e equals the slope of the trajectory. And uh, if the system is any of an any dimension, and in this case we are considering two, but um, in general for any n-dimensional uh, system uh, that can be represented by a matrix equation dx dt equals a times x where a is the matrix we know that uh, the requirement of dx dt equal to zero can be fulfilled only if a is a certain type of matrix and can you identify what type of matrix should it be I'm glad you do a should be a singular matrix so in this way we have um, certain very uh, simple criteria to find out the equilibrium points of a system that we will um, apply in our further let's observe a particular case of an autonomous system in which we define our equation as dx dt equals x squared minus x now the first question i would like to ask you is can you identify the equilibrium points of the system? I'm sure you can. From what we have learned so far, all you have to do is just to put dx dt equal to 0. And so the values of x turn out to be 0 and 1. Now we plot our direction fields and observe the values of x between 0 and 1 and beyond 0 and beyond 1. In the first case, we are taking the values of uh, x as uh, two initial values, one negative and one positive, and we look at the slope of the graph. Now you can clearly see that the direction fields of the graph are increasing above point 1, x equal to 1, and below x equal to 0. Isn't it? Yeah, and in the second case, we observe the values between x equal to 0 and x equal to 1, and we see that all the direction field tangents are either going flat or decreasing. So it gives a very good idea of uh, uh, the, the quantitative behavior of solution just from uh, the given dynamical system, that it increases beyond zero and below um, and beyond one, and it uh, strictly is decreasing or is constant between zero and one. For a better understanding, let's observe a few more examples. Uh, in the first case, we choose x bigger than 1 
it's for the same equation and we see that the direction fields for all the values bigger than 1 they are pretty much flat in the second case we are taking values of x that are negative and we see that the graph is actually increasing as we observed before and in the last case we are observing values between minus 5 and 1 and we see that the slope is increasing for all values bigger than minus 5 but as soon as x approaches 0 they start flattening out and between 0 and 1 they are they look pretty much flat so this further confirms our observation from the previous graphs that uh, x the slope of x is increasing um, below x equal to 0 and above x equal to um, 1 uh, far greater than 1 actually uh, but yes as long as it's between 0 and 1 um, the slope is pretty much horizontal now it's also important to talk about a particular kind of solution of a dynamical system that stays constant within a closed neighborhood um, and there we talk about the first integral. So the first integral is the name of a, a, a particular solution of a dynamical system that stays constant within uh, a certain closed domain. And uh, we can name it as a big K or something like that. So um, we can say that a first integral uh, locally stays constant uh, for the trajectory of the system. And um, we can also um, talk about an example here. So, for example, uh, uh, let's take the one that we have been discussing so far, uh, which is dx dt as x squared minus x. Um, if we solve it uh, as a separable equation, it yields uh, minus log of x t plus log of x t minus 1 minus t equal to k. Now, t is a scalar. It can be absorbed in k to yield the big k, and we can... Uh, say that uh, the sum of two functions here is uh, equal to a constant and those two functions uh, are uh, log of x and log of x minus 1. So there we go with our first lecture on linear dynamical systems. I hope you enjoyed it. And now you're looking forward to apply all the ideas learned in some form and we have uh, prepared a lot of challenges for you to do that because learning is doing. There are some examples um, in a more comprehensive form that you can do with us during the lecture. And there are some uh, challenges to take home. Uh, you can do it on your own time because we have a very highly interactive and adaptive learning system where you can test yourself you can uh, fix your things by uh, the feedback that is provided to you on the system and um, enjoy the subject uh, in, in a real manner. In the second lecture, we are going to talk about a very beautiful application of um, linear dynamical systems. Um, that application also um, involves drawing po face portraits manually and um, with the Maple software that we will provide you free training for. We will also talk about uh, the sufficient autonomous systems and how to turn them into a canonical form and the significance of why we need to do so. So stay tuned with us, be subscribed so that you get a notification of every lecture and you have plenty of time to prepare for it. Thanks very much.